Quilting is one of the most ancient practices. In Japan, it's called sashiko, and it played a major role in the Japanese army. You'd be surprised to know what quilts were used as armor in Japan. Back in those days, when women were thought of only as homemakers, quilting was an art form. It was used to portray emotions almost like a painting. Quilting has been a trend that has been long lost from a solution to reuse fabrics to it becoming an expression. Now, as I see an art form that signifies many cultures reduced to a business, it just hurts my conscience. There are a lot of quilters who've made quite a name for themselves in the industry. The Missouri Star Quilt Company might come on the top, and there's no doubt that they're one of the biggest sources of information on the internet, even though it has kept the traditions alive, maybe it isn't in a positive light anymore. The Missouri Star Quilt Company has used the internet to stretch its business all around the world, and its designs are amazing to say the least. They've grown so much, and they have the largest collection of fabrics that are pre-cut for an easy quilting experience. This takes a lot out of the process. Quilting isn't the end product, but the entire process in general is an art form that cultivates a lot of good habits and character. Some of them are perfectionists, and the most important of all, patience. Then, if the process is easy, then what's the point? I'm sure some people would like to take the yellow brick road and do it the authentic way, but for which they have tutorials with tips and tricks and years and years of experience to back them up, but in the end, isn't it all business? A way for them to churn more money in? We know that Missouri Star Quilt Company loves their job, and they build the entire company with passion and love. Profiting off of it is the only way they can sustain their craft. That has helped them grow and innovate new ways to stay ahead of the game. The competition, however, isn't as competitive as other businesses. The entire community of quilters is filled with positive people who are always willing to learn and master their craft. The beauty of it, and I'm glad to be a part of it too. They began their business back in 2008 with about 14 years of experience. Their products are some of the best qualities you'd ever find in the market. YouTube is where they make videos on quilting with tips and tricks that could help anyone, regardless of them being a beginner or a pro. A lot of people look up to Jenny, the driving force of the company. She is truly a misery star and quilt influencer. She was the reason I got into quilting in the first place, and honestly, I was in it for the money. Now that I realize how hard it is, I might have to pull back. It seems so easy to start a YouTube channel and then the app plays a couple of ads and you get paid. Sounds simple, but the amount of hard work behind it is way more than I anticipated. I should have known as they've been in the business for about 15 years, realizing how hard Jenny has worked all of these years to be where she is. It's a slap on my face to not look for shortcuts. I thought about the legacy and all the things that come with quilting and then making money had me a bit biased. I'd say that I was jealous, but now that I see it, Jenny and the Missouri Star Quilt Company deserve all of it. They might have motivated me to go out there and make it work and keep on trying. They make about $100,000 from YouTube ad revenues just by teaching others, and I can't even see a straight line. They have a huge online family of about 850,000 subscribers who are all avid learners, and it can't be this perfect. I mean, they get about 130 subscribers per day and easily make $300 per day. They've motivated me to work hard and improve my skills, which is a very good thing, but the heights that I'm aiming for are where they stand, and even though it's a competition, I can't help but admire them, and I hate it.